Oh, I don't know what the day is. I just said it was the 12th. Today's March 12th. Welcome. My milk expires today. It's not going to be a speed run. There were a lot of people that were like, oh my god, no speed run. So, Whoa, slow down there, Speedy Gonzalez. It's Take time it for, easy. We need, we need some banter today. Well, That's a risky milk. Well, uh... No, I mean, it's fine. It's just I noticed today that the date is the 12th, so I gotta finish it before then. We, uh, we don't want to say, like, if you're a patron, we're probably gonna be more likely to do what you ask than not a patron. I'm just saying, you know, it's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee. Like, don't think you There's can ask for things. There's a lot of people, things. both patrons and YouTube comments, who well, mentioned that they preferred the longer format. Well, so. let's just put it like this. Although the engagement was higher. Well, let's, let's put it like this. If you liked the speedier format... You were outvoiced. Your lack of commitment to the comment section has cost you speedier content. And so. now we're here, and it's like 70 degrees outside and sunny. And we're going to do like a longer 60. format. <laughs> we're going to have to do this in the afternoons one weekday. Don't want to do it on Friday, because then the news will be even more stale. Yeah. I wouldn't mind doing it during the week. It'd be nice to have Oh, Sundays. yeah. LTX. I'm going to LTX. Chris is not going because wedding, and Ryan's not going because Canada. I, I no, would love don't, to go. don't blame the Canadians. <laughs> I just don't give a shit. <laughs> Ryan's not a real social person. And uh, that would be a very social event. But Wendell's going. I love you all. So uh, if you are we're think, if you're on the fence about going, maybe you should go if you want to go see Wendell. There's a lot of people that are going to LTX. And it's also like DreamHack. And it's like it's turned into an event. It's not just some random bozos in a warehouse. That's a joke about something else. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Yeah, also, this episode is apparently sponsored by Nestle Pure Life. I don't have because, one. Uh, the best water. I don't know. We, we somehow ended up with it in the shot. It, it really, it's the, the reverse osmosis. It's not really sponsored by That's Nestle. That's all we drink in this office. Nestle would be unhappy with us because we would say that Nestle is an evil company, and yet we drink their water. I will accept slavery for such delicious water. That's... No. And so will you, because you drink it. <laughs> I drink it occasionally. I have a water filter at home. It does. Ooh. It, Ooh. It, you know, the most fancy thing is to like pour this into a Keurig, and it's just like, really, have we? We've. we've... That's what we do, though. <laughs> like, I was instructed by our office manager: do not use tap water in the Keurig. You it's, oh, because the, the, the hard water is yeah. bad yeah. for it. Yeah. Turns out that nobody likes drinking. Like, if there's like a, this crusty, it looks like the it's like the something minerals. from SpongeBob SquarePants in the bottom. It's of the minerals, thing. Marie. <laughs> no, listen, that's the beauty. That's not everybody in the world can live like this. We must defend our position. <laughs> ah, it's crazy as Cortez wants to take this lifestyle away from us. <laughs> and you know what else is unique to the American experience? It's Mr. Jeep Pie. A Jeep Pie's rosy broadband deployment claim may be based on a gigantic error. So I can't believe I didn't put this together. But we reported on this. There was an ISP that filed this report that was like, look, we got coverage everywhere. We're great. Woo. It was one ISP that single-handedly moved the needle. One of Ajit Pai's claims was that broadband speeds rose 25%, and or that the the places where you could get 25 megabit, there were 25% more year over year. But it was just one ISP claiming that they offered service when, in fact, they did not. They've admitted it. And they said they wanted to fix it, but they blamed the government shutdown for not mm. being able to. Somehow, oh, of course. you couldn't make that phone call. That's a convenient scapegoat that keeps coming up for them, doesn't it? Right. So... Yeah. A Jeep Pie has, it's it's worse, like the, the broadband deployment was worse because they don't have to spend money because why would they? It's a captive audience. Significantly worse. Like this is not, it wouldn't have just been a statistical aberration. It was, what was it, like 30 million, 20 million, 30 million? Just absolutely wrong. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was like uh, 24.9. Another thing that a Jeep Pie won't like to hear is uh, his record keeping has been it's been put into question? May violate federal law. In fact, <laughs> that is literally the headline. House to FCC's Ajit Pai, your record keeping may violate feder federal law. Oh, <laughs> this is a weird one. I didn't say how. Well, I think that this has to. You know how um, there have been a ton of FOIA requests around internal communications and they've just stonewalled where it's like hey tell us about how you responded to this and hey you remember how the attorneys general are suing you in new york about that whole uh impersonation thing can you tell us what api keys were used which by the way we're, we're getting some data on that we haven't reported on that because it's still kind of a developing story but there have been six or seven instances like that and ajit pies fcc is like oh and that you can't you can't do that as a federal agency you have to be able to respond to freedom of information requests. And they're not, because well, it's embarrassing and corruptive. I like to imagine it's just like tons of post-it notes. Like, <laughs> it's not actually filed at all. 
yeah, it's just like there's a post-it note on the IT director, like the old, like the, the guy that got fired. It's just on his desk, and it's like the bad men have attacked the server, and it's just it's like what evidence do you have? It's like well, I it was a post-it note. No, I'm thinking like Charlie's Wall from <laughs> Always Sunny with the yarn. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think they're that creative at the FCC. No, they're they've been cornered. The only way out of this is if they like fake a uh, you know a data breach or like a server's crashed and they lost the data. They also, that's really the only way out for them at this point because it seems pretty clearly criminal wrongdoing. No, nah, nothing's gonna happen to them. Nobody's gonna cry out for that. Everybody that matters, all the lobbyists love them, so nothing will happen. Also, nothing will happen based on the government keeping a secret database of dissidents. <laughs> what, did you say China? No. No, not China. <laughs> I was going to say, we should play Guess the Country. But this is coming from CB, or NBC San Diego. This, San Diego. This uh, uh, leaked document show the U.S. government tracking journalists and immigration advocates through a secret database. Well, it's not so secret now, is it? So it turns out people that were going to Mexico, this whole caravan thing, uh, it seemed like they were detained an awful lot. And it turns out there was a reason, and it was because U.S. authorities and, and Mexican authorities were keeping a database where the U.S. was instructing Mexico or vice versa. And yeah, that's not a thing you're supposed to be able to do, as I understand the Constitution. Their excuse is all these people were present at some sort of border violence when that first caravan showed up. They had like a riot or something. And because there was violence involved, it was okay to keep. But these people weren't involved in the violence some of them were just taking pictures of it and reporting on it so as, as one does as a journalist it's not okay <laughs> to keep a secret database on that <laughs> but again nothing will happen and nothing happening is a theme in all of the u.s news this week because remember when new york kicked charter out of their state and we were all like wow they're actually doing something Good guy, new york well guess what they never actually did anything new york has not followed through on an order to kick charter out of state when Ars Technica reached out for comment, they were like, oh. <laughs> they paid us a lot of money, though, and like we just need that money with the Amazon deal not falling <laughs> well, they, out. Like, they gave them an extension. They're quote-unquote negotiating. So oh. I imagine that means somebody's getting paid. a nice little monthly payment. Yeah. And they do not want to wrap that up anytime soon. This, uh, this story, I got to tell you, I almost shed a little bit of a tear. But I'm not going to tell you why till after. We'll see how closely you read this. <laughs> Chelsea Manning jailed for like... refusing to testify on WikiLeaks. So the, the the this has to do with like the whole it's not really to do like the prosecutor gave her immunity so that she could testify because they're investigating this whole like Trump Russia WikiLeaks thing and she said, "Look, at at my um, court martial hearing, I already said everything there is to say. Anything that you need from that, you can get here. I'm not going to say anything else. And so they put her in jail for contempt. But Zur was actually protesting the secret court. Oh, yeah, because it's, uh, it's uh, a grand jury investigation. So the way that it works here in the U.S., you have a grand jury investigation. And in a grand jury investigation, like all this evidence is presented in secret court to a jury, which is supposedly normal people. And the normal people are like, yeah, this sounds like maybe a law has been violated. And then you actually go to trial. So this is like prelude to actually accusing somebody of wrongdoing. Shim will be incarcerated until he admits and agrees to testify or until the dissolution of the grand jury. Now, here's what caused me to choke up a little bit. The excuse given for not incarcerating but granting home arrest was gender affirming medical techniques being required on a daily basis. Think about what that means. The judge ruled federal marshals will be responsible for performing those acts. Those poor federal marshals. Imagine what they're going to have to go through. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be giving them a hormone supplement? If reassignment surgery happened, right? That was that Okay. That actually happened. You have to prevent the wound from closing. Oh. Mm. I don't know enough about. Welcome to the Marshall Service. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. Sure speaking of doctor for that. Speaking of lunatics, Lady Pocahontas has <laughs> demanded 
We break up the big tech companies. So I read this, and Elizabeth Warren calls to break up Google, Facebook, and Amazon. I read this, and all I read was like the the delusional ramblings of a very out of touch lady. Uh, she's got some points. It's funny because some of the people that they asked to comment on this, some of the experts, were like, "Well, bless her heart, <laughs> it's in the right place." <laughs> She she's, doesn't know oh, what she's the hell she's talking about. Bless your heart. They're all Southern people who come uh, Bless your heart is the best insult. Yeah, you know, it really because is. Because, I mean, it's it sounds so good, but it really is just calling you an idiot. Or just bless it. The first half of what she's complaining about are things that are actually things the current incumbent ISPs are doing. Like the whole, like, controlling the market and being able to redirect this and that and all this kind of stuff. There's not, like... It's a it, that okay. If you're going to make that argument, a better argument would be those arguments for like Comcast and Charter and such as your ISP because you really don't have a choice. You can use DuckDuckGo as a search engine. Increasingly, that's less true. I mean, that's probably less true than it was five or six years ago. There are less competent search engines now than there were five or six that's years why ago. Why invest in it if you're yeah. always but, just going to be replaced by Google? But you can't ever get away from the tracking. Yeah. So. I'm not sure if she understands that. No. At least not, you know, on a technical level that would... She doesn't understand, like, the separation of the different technologies. I mean, that's pretty clear. It's also really horrifying because she's going to try to set up laws that will ultimately end up being written by these companies, which will just cement their position, as has happened for the last 20 or 30 years in everything involving technology. You know, call me cynical, but I don't really think that has anything to do with this announcement. I think this has to do with something that's going to happen next year. <laughs> Some Somebody's run for president? Is that what you're saying? Could be. <laughs> now, this next story... Our first I'm... Native American president. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I'm torn about this story because, uh, you know, I'm, on one hand, I always want to err on the side of, like, let innovation happen... It's a business you don't have to participate. But on the other side, cashlessness is a scourge on the world that must be stopped. So <laughs> I, I feel like uh, what was the the king that cut the baby in half? Solomon. Oh, Solomon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Amazon. Philadelphia bans cashless stores. But the article goes on to explain that this may not really affect Amazon. Amazon says their stores are good for anybody. But Philadelphia was like, eh, just make it only for Amazon Prime members because but, things like Costco are fine. No, no, here's the thing. So that kind of makes sense, right? Well, actually, the argument I think that Amazon would make is it's not for everybody. It's just for people who have Amazon accounts, right? Could be. So this catches on. It becomes the new norm. It cuts down on all kinds of overhead. It helps with shoplifting, yada, yada, yada. All of a sudden, there's a sign-up terms of service kiosk in every Walmart and Meyer and Kroger. So you cannot, you literally cannot shop. And there's going to be a connect with Facebook button. And that's, that's all kinds of horror. They're already recording you at Walmart. Have you noticed that? I don't know if you've been to Walmart recently. You mean on the camera system? No, like if you go to the, the self-checkout kiosk, there's webcams that are pointing at you the entire time you're scanning. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because they have to try to fight against uh, swapping out the UPCs. That's crazy. Yeah, that is kind of nuts. The, uh, the thing, though, is that the loyalty cards affect the price so much that most people have, I mean, you, you, you have a choice not to join the loyalty program, but they're still tracking you. So why not save the money? And the price difference is sometimes scary. Yeah. It's like, I, but, I would love to have some $5 Oreos that are $3 off if I am a member of the loyalty program. But imagine if that becomes join or just don't shop here. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have to homestead, but I work full time. <laughs> but where are you going to get the bees? tools with which to homestead? Yeah. I mean, are you going to become a smith with stone tools? <laughs> you have to be like that guy from Primitive Technology. The day the tractor supply requires a membership in order to buy stuff is the day that I... Listen, I son, I ain't got a Facebook page. <laughs> I just need my tractor supply. <laughs> well, make you mark here and Billy Bob's going to follow you around. <laughs> Write down what you look at. You know, you can just buy it. Like, this is unrelated. You guys wanted longer news. Here you go. Uh, I had to buy a, what is it? The cough, kennel cough vaccine for my dog. They just let any asshole walk in there and buy that. I <laughs> well, administered kennel cough vaccine to my dog. What would you, how ago. would you abuse that? I don't know. It was, I mean, it was like locked up in a freezer, but like, <laughs> well, I could just probably, go in and buy it. Like, that's to keep it 
yeah like useful right but it's still locked like i couldn't just go up to the freezer and like open it and get the kettle coffee well you can still get those fish antibiotics i think yeah they're trying to stop you (laughs) they've got other stuff too like all like all the basic puppy vaccines and stuff you can just get all that every now and again i go to the tractor supply place to buy very very large gauge needles for the purpose of depositing solder paste in very precise places on a, on a circuit board. massive amounts of heroin. That's what they assume, yeah. They're like, uh. So I've, I've taken to bringing in my little canister of solder paste to be like, this is, you know, it's, this is not just don't, for injecting animals. Like they would know what that Don't was, give in so. to them. Just like, while you're, while you're getting it, just scratch. Like, oh, I need this. Like, like, like they would know. <laughs> I'm sure they see plenty of that. No, I mean, like, if you brought in the thing of thermal paste, he's like, no, it's for this. And they're like, uh. <laughs> what kind of meth is that? So, yeah. Well, you can Google this and be like, oh, yeah, you can use large diameter needles. to, Yeah. Okay. That was uh, on that HBO meth documentary. I was One of the things that the meth users used to describe how good the meth was is like it was thick. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is real thick. It's going to be good. I, I don't know. You know, I, I never really thought about what texture meth was. Put some cornmeal in there when you're mixing it up. <laughs> That is a weird thought. I thought it was like a, like a icy sort of texture. Well, when you shoot it, you have to break it down. Oh, okay. That makes sense. You can't just stuff crystals in Well, I was thinking, you know, maybe it's like rock candy. You know, I don't know. You also have to break that down to shoot it. There goes the monetization for this week. Well, let's talk about Christopher Ray, the head of the FBI. He's saying something that he said probably a million times at this point, and he's going to keep saying it. Christopher Ray, we can't let criminals hide behind encryption. I speaking, don't know that he has that accent. Speaking at the RSA conference, Ray <laughs> acknowledges the topic is provocative. That was supposed to be a diminutive accent. Like, you know, just uh, like, oh. that was more of a Southern judge. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, maybe that works. Like the just, accent you used in the Intel court case. Like, I can't be bothered to understand how encryption works. All I can do is, is impotently demand this. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's so impotent. Yeah, I mean, if we get those laws passed, I mean, good. the the whole, like, nobody really has come clean. Like, a lot of the encryption disasters, like the OPM hack, that's a self-inflicted wound. It's because we put backdoors in our own encryption. Secret backdoors. The NSA, they've given up on <laughs> Speaking the which. incendiary program. Well, I mean, that was a lot of years ago now. And they say they're going to shut it down, which is not really any kind of news at all. <laughs> disputed NSA phone program is shut down an aide says that's not really shut down see the NSA no longer has to collect this data they can just get it directly from carriers and that's actually more legal than this previous thing which was you know not exactly legal because the carriers collect that data and the carriers collecting that data is totally fine and then the NSA collecting that data from carriers is totally fine whereas if they directly collect that data themselves maybe that's not okay I don't uh, I don't see do you really think that there's a lot of criminals still talking on the phone at a high level like this? No. I watch TV shows now, and they'll be on on the phone talking about murders, and it's like, come on. There's no believability here. <laughs> These are supposed to be hardened you criminals. You text it with a bunch of emojis. Like no, they're, literally, they're literally yeah. like get on the phone like, he killed her. Like, why would you say that? <laughs> get on the phone. It's like, they went dancing together. It ended. Badly. I'm winking. <laughs> well, th- even code names. I mean, you got to come up with a better system. It's ridiculous. I read this and I was amazed. I was like, "How? There is no way, no way, American law enforcement would let this fly." And then it turns out this is from Canada. <laughs> mm-hmm. Google Maps adding photo radar warnings for drivers. The Canadians went on to say, "This is great because normally we only have photo radar like going one direction, like say northbound at a four four way intersection." And Google's going to give you a warning from all four directions. So this is actually better than us just placing four cameras. But more importantly, they only have a limited supply of them. So they always move them to the scene of the last accident or high accident areas. And they're like, yeah, we use these things to try to stop accidents, not to generate revenue. (laughs) So we're fine with this. I did notice, Wendell and I had to go to a meeting the other day and we were using Google Maps to get there. And I noticed it does track your speed in Google Maps. It'll tell you the speed you're supposed to be going. Oh, it's telling everybody the speed. (laughs) But but I wonder if they were considering building that feature into like the American version, then it was like, oh, no, 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 no. The uh, modern car, like my car's new, so it probably has it, has the, uh, the broadcast. So the speed and direction is being broadcast at all times out of your car. So, data brokers, 
they're kind of secretive. We, I mean, we know Facebook and Google and all those, but those are first party data brokers. They vacuum up your data directly. What about the third parties, the people who just buy and sell it, like an open market? Well, we've learned a little bit about them. Fast Company has this article here, the data brokers quietly buying and selling your personal information. Oh, we're going to learn a lot more about these data brokers come the security segment, dot, 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 foreshadowing. Well, they, <laughs> this is out of uh, Vermont because, you know, everybody incorporates in Vermont. Here's, here's the wow. like, Venn diagram of doom <laughs> that shows all of them. And then there's a big list at the bottom here if you go to the one tab. Uh Vermont has, this, later. Vermont has this new law where companies have to register and declare how they're using their your personal information. So all of these companies that are incorporated or do business in Vermont are having to declare what they're doing with customer data. So this has been really interesting. We've made it to the P's. Still going. There's a lot of them. There's a lot. <laughs> the other thing about this uh, list is you can actually go into these things and uh, there's an opt-out. But every one of them has their individual opt-out program. It's uh, some of them. It didn't seem to me like there were an actual opt-out form. Some of them were, was just like a PDF that you fill out, and it's like they'll tell you what information they have on you. But there wasn't like some of them had an opt-out thing. That's like I would but, like my information. Well, I think you can take it further though. Like the, there's a legal requirement. Oh, okay. So you get that information, and then you could go through some stuff. You probably end up having to hire a lawyer. I guess some but, of those would be like, hey, I must uh, fill this out, and just by virtue of having gotten this form, you're wanting to opt out, but. Some of the forms didn't seem like they would let you do that. This story, after reading this story, I imagined like two paragraphs in the CDC being one of those short haircut soccer moms <laughs> complaining at the school. It's like, my child's going to get hurt playing <laughs> soccer. It's not right. <laughs> the CDC is studying a rise in e-scooter injuries for the first time as startups expand to more cities. E-scooter injuries? Electric scooter. But... But why? Because. Listen, I might scrape my knee. And yeah, that's a people lawsuit. fall down off of scooters and they hurt themselves. And it's your own fault for riding a scooter. No, Krista, this is the public's fault. It's it, a, the government needs to save us from these scooters. Is the CDC investigating bicycle injuries or? No. Well, they're because, wondering if they're infectious. Here's, a, here's an example the of the terrible. So she's never going to get over that. How? I'm, my curious question is like, how bad do you have to mess up riding a scooter to fall on your face like that and scrape up your lip? Pretty bad. But I'm sure it's common. However, you just got better at riding a scooter. You just leveled up. You're not going to do that again. Unless it's like one of those little tiny, like, uh, what are the razor scooters? Well, that's what they are. A single pebble will throw you No, forward. no, did you see the, the picture? But they're... No, they're electric, though. Electric right? powered. So there's one. It's basically an electric razor. The, the tires are more beefy on that, though. On the original Razor, they were just, like, super skinny. The tiniest pebble would throw you off. Yeah, but we're talking about people who probably haven't ridden a two-wheel vehicle for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, just get over it. Get up. Get back on that horse, is what I'm saying. You gotta go to the ER. Tame you gotta go that to the scooter. ER. Ransomware is just becoming more and more prevalent, and there's really... No one's found a solution so a lot of the times, you just got to pay the ransom. And people learn that the hard way. Georgia County has paid a whopping $400,000 to get rid of a ransomware infection. The county hired a cybersecurity consultant to negotiate the ransom fee with a hacker group. It turns out that uh, they've been trying to recover their stuff for months. And they haven't had any luck. So they paid the ransom so they could start decrypting stuff. How much do you think the cybersecurity consultant cost it on top of that? Well, like, that's probably about 100K. Yeah. Well, they admitted they're like, it, it would take us to replace the equipment and all the man hours to put it all back together, plus the lost records. It's going to cost way more than half a million. So let's just do it. You think we'll, we'll have the same headline in like six months to a year where it's like, they got their stuff again because they just painted mm -hmm. a giant target on their back? Could be that it's they. You don't negotiate with terrorists. We'll track them down <laughs> to. Uh, Eastern Europe, there's like an Eastern European group they think is responsible for all of these. And they specifically go after the municipality mm. targets because they'll usually pay and they usually pay a lot of money. And they're usually a disaster when it comes to their technology. Yeah. So if you're looking to get into the ransomware game, <laughs> pro criminal tip, go after the big fish. 
Now let's talk about China for a little while because you got to talk about China, right? Every Make time. Make us feel better about America. And when you talk about China, you got to talk about Huawei. These uh, Chinese tech giant Huawei sues the U.S. and Texas in pushback against security risk claims. So this is cool. I mean, Huawei is basically saying, hey, look, you know, you need to put up or shut up because you're hurting their business. And they're doing it in Texas. So cool. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah. And pretty good argument. Hey, listen, you're going to talk that shit? Prove it. Or at least give us some concrete charges that we can refute. You've done neither. One of my favorite quotes in this was from their lawyer. was like uh, the Huawei lawyer. And the Huawei lawyer basically said, it's like, look, one of, our, one of our foreign nationals is held in China. And Trump has said that he will release her if we can get a favorable trade deal. Doesn't that make this completely politically motivated? Like anything else you say is not credible. And it's like, mm, yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. I don't think a local court will accept responsibility for Trump. No. They'll just be like, listen, I didn't vote for Trump. Actually, they're in Texas. <laughs> they probably did. Uh, China spying. We know they do it. All this political stuff, it doesn't matter. China's spying because everybody's spying. China's just good at it. And are they so good at it that they have this brilliant new technique? I don't know. It seems like hyperbole. U.S. tech firms fear China could be spying on them by using power cords, a report says. So I saw a thing where a guy put Wi-Fi inside of an iPhone charging cable and you couldn't tell. It was amazing. So I believe this. Well, they have talked about there was that uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah. Uh, it's like, don't plug into public power sources. So it's all you need is power, right? Yeah. And a power cable is always going to be plugged in. So why not? <laughs> it's uh, it's not as, as dire as it might sound if you have you know, a device that is embedded in the power cable because you would have to interface with everything else wirelessly. So you might have Bluetooth low energy or Wi-Fi or possibly even cellular or possibly like something in the parking lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, this would be easy to screen for if these companies are really concerned about this, especially the larger companies. It would be real easy for them to screen all their power cords. You got to do like uh, the kids' backpacks at school. You got to make them all transparent. <laughs> Well, that was how Apple did it. Like Apple had like the uh, the G fives, and they came with transparent uh, cords, which yellowed over time, and you could see like the the connections breaking down and like turning a weird brown color. Even better because you got to buy a new one. Yeah, it's like oh, this is it's designed that way. It's getting You're dangerously close jobs. to a fire hazard. Yeah, creating jobs. That's that's beautiful. Chris, what do you think about this? Uh, I like almost everything that the Intercept designed. Pretty good stock photo. Yeah, I don't like, I feel like their site looks. So good. is this saying that like Google is split in half over whether or not? To do Dragonfly? Is that's, that what that's communicating? Yeah. And it's also done in the Chinese colors, which is cool. You're right. <laughs> Way to pick up on that, man. I'm good at colors. <laughs> what if, no, I think it's McDonald's colors. I think that's what they <laughs> were going for. Could you tell us the headline? <laughs> Google employees uncover ongoing work on censored China search. So this is Dragonfly. And it turns out it's like... Surprising no one. Well, I mean, you read the article and they're like... Uh, I think didn't they just remove the people who didn't like it? Yeah. Like, that's pretty much, they were like, well, oh, we won't work on it anymore. We're just going to move you to another project. Also, we're going to have your, your cubicle mate come over to this division now. But Don't the thing is, it. what they're basing this on, the complaint on, is there are ongoing changes to those code bases, which they still have visibility to. Yeah. So there could be as few as 100 people working on it now, whereas more people were working on it before. It's not production ready, but to say that production has halted entirely is not accurate. Now, Google admits that they were going to finish up whatever they were working on which also doesn't speak to bury it and never let it see the light of day again. Yeah, it's definitely not a mea culpa of like, oh, I didn't think about it. We should totally not do this. It's more like, mm, this isn't right right now. Maybe later. Yeah, I think it's pretty common, especially in stuff like this in the tech world, where we can't get away with this right now, but everything changes year to year. So we'll just wait till the time is more opportune. You know, China's playing the long game. So is Google. They'll get it eventually we'll see it and speaking of governments behaving badly how about egypt egypt government used gmail third-party apps to fish activists cairo government targeted local human rights defenders media and civil organizers staff so this was a very sophisticated actually we're stealing oauth tokens that was that was this the oauth token article? yeah yeah they were getting you to they would fish you into clicking uh an illegitimate oauth yeah. And then they'd steal your token and then they'd use that token to make changes. Once they've got your token, even when you change your password, 
you, the their apps would still have access. You'd have to go in and revoke their permission, which most people don't know to do. So hopefully they know to do it now. This probably wouldn't be super effective at stealing stuff, but because it's the government, all they want to do is just disrupt yeah. the dis, uh, dissidents, then super useful for that. Or at least track them down or get access to their mailbox to scan their emails to be like, confirmed dissident. Harsh. Well, I'm glad that the U.S. government would never have like a secret list or something like yeah. that. <laughs> a secret list of journalists to harass at the border? That would never do such a, a thing. A secret database that's that would, also secret? That would be terrible. <laughs> Putin! It's always good to talk about Putin, right? You know, Thanks, I feel like Putin's me. not in the news enough. It's like <laughs> Russia doesn't get talked about enough in the U.S. news. Putin on the blitz. Putin wants his own internet. A new world, a new law would create a single command post from which authorities can manage and halt information flows across Russia and cyberspace. So this article goes on. It seems like they're quoting Putin saying, man, you know, China's got that whole great firewall thing locked up. We need something like that in Russia. So, uh, and then he's saying, Putin is actually saying that this would defend against outside ad- attackers. So it's like people might be attacking Russian interests, but if, Russia had a kill switch for the rest of the internet, then that wouldn't happen. Which is not wrong, but it also opens the door for a lot of really other terrible things. But that's not He's really, fine with that. In practice, that's not what they're doing. Yeah. So they've already actually done this. They have like a Muslim minority part of Russia, which again, the, the mirror to China is eerie there. And they had some riots and some, you know, those people got a lot of control. So they turned off mobile for everywhere in that area. In that area. They did so by going to each provider and being like, you will shut this down or Ivan will come to your house. And so they shut it down, but they're like, you know what? That was inefficient. We need a better way. So they're talking about putting filter boxes everywhere. Like we're going to have 5G. They're going to have filter boxes. And the filter boxes call home and report back statistics, but they also are just a kill switch in case you want to turn a geographic region off. Well, we're having an outage in your area right now. What do people think of the Ivans in the world? What are they going to do for work? What do you mean? They're going to keep... They're going to keep breaking people's fingers? Yeah. yeah. You never run out of usefulness for them. No. There's always going to be somebody getting out of line. And speaking of getting out of line, the French think that the big tech companies are a little out of line in terms of their tax payments. <laughs> French tax on internet giants could yield 500 million euros per year. This is... Uh, seems kind of greedy. Like... You know, the Reuters people are trying to outline this as like, this is tax revenue from commerce transactions that occur in France. So we should get a cut of that. But really, in the article, when you when you look at the details, it seems like this is a tax grab. Like, what are we going to do? That, like, how does this even work? I'll just pull out. Let them use the Russian internet. <laughs> we don't need them. They, talk, they also seem to be complaining about French companies that had sold to foreign interests, and they're like, well, we got to tax them double. It doesn't say that, but it's like, mm, is that the implication. You, is that what you're saying here? It's because like, they're no longer French. We really need to tax them because that seems not that exactly. That seems pretty classic France. Yeah. Now, Krista, I'm not saying this, but I'm saying that you have been described in business terms as overly aggressive. Mm. <laughs> So would you feel okay if we zap your brain a little bit, try to dial that back? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. But in Spain, prisoners' brains are being electrically stimulated in the name of science. Wow. Uh, I like the word neurointervention. <laughs> it sounds it makes so it helpful. Sound, yeah. Did, didn't we have this before? Wasn't it called electroshock therapy? <laughs> I don't think I could do my job as a UX designer if <laughs> That's I was what they, electrically stimulated. Remember the, the retarded Kennedy daughter that yeah. embarrassed them? And they were what just like, go scoop that shit out. That's, <laughs> she, is, uh, she cannot sully the Kennedy name. This is a little bit less invasive. They don't even have to install probes. They just gently, as they describe it, Shock the frontal cortex of your brain. And the belief is, it makes you less aggressive. They, they shock that stubbornness right on out. <laughs> aggressiveness, not stubbornness. And here's the thing. They're doing it on prisoners. And these are volunteer prisoners. Willing, of course. 100% willing. Kind of like those prisoners in uh, China that volunteered their livers. Mm. Uh, Spain, what are you doing? I'm starting to understand why that one little part of Spain wanted to not be part of Spain anymore. I don't think that was probably over this. But. 
it uh, this will be interesting because you got to like is it possible i don't think it's possible that they could target aggressiveness without affecting everything else oh yeah no they totally will it's it's totally just electroshock therapy from a long time ago which messes up a lot of stuff but eh. and uh you i know, mean it probably would make you less aggressive but who knows what other side effects you know you one get. of the, the cool things is uh they have have you ever heard of that surgery where they can go in and actually like <laughs> solder off your sweat glands like cauterize them and stop certain parts of your body from sweating but inevitably your body will compensate. So like if they go into your underarms and turn them off, your back will just like double down. Well, so, yeah, yeah, you got to get rid of that heat somehow. Right. So I think, where does this come out? Where does this damn break? What what personality trait does that become? That's going to be like a clockwork orange. <laughs> Tim Cook. Here, so this is another story that I'm torn on, right? <laughs> on one hand, Trump is an idiot, obviously. On the other hand, who should give a shit what Tim Cook's name is? No one should yeah. know Tim Cook's name. This was actually trending on Twitter, and I was confused about why. Tim Cook is now Tim Apple, like the symbol Apple on Twitter. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, great. the reason is because Trump, they had a meeting or something, and Trump referred to him as Tim Apple, because obviously he doesn't know his name, nor does he care, which I think is brilliant. I don't think Trump did it because of that. I think Trump is just like, looks at Tim as a lower form of life. But so do I. <laughs> so again, I'm, I'm so torn on this. I, I don't know. That's not the worst thing in the world. But like, I just don't, I, why is this a story? Why is like this being to, picked up by media, including us? I like to think that you have a, you know, years formed opinion of why that is. Whereas in this case, it might've just been idiocy. Well, I don't ever want to know or a CEO's name. You speak to me through your product. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. All of that should be behind the scenes. We should not care. And if it turns out that maybe you were like, you know, a Nazi sympathizer in the Klan or whatever, then you don't have to worry about that being dug up. And if you're just a douchebag like Tim Cook, again, speak to me through your product. And let's not get politics involved in all this nonsense. Ah, <laughs> uh, and now we're on to the security section. And start off... We? As we always do with a little data leak. 800 million emails leaked online by email verification service. They they botched the headline. 800 million uh, users have been leaked by email verification service. Your email is linked to your IP, your address. This is like a marketing database that has a zillion points of data. And it is scary. It is scary AF. Well, also, email verification service. What is that, right? Why do you need an email verification service? Well, if you're a marketer or a criminal who has a leak, how do you know which emails are active, right? How do you know which ones to try to steal from or to sell your garbage to and which ones to ignore? Using the email verification service. They literally will just send emails to everybody and let you know who actually got it and who didn't. Terrible people all around. They, uh, went so far as to associate multiple emails with an individual. So it's like you got the made up email for every different service. That's a good strategy. They have stuff in place to defeat it. So I, if you're in the EU, you could probably collect a hefty GDPR violation from this company. That'd be cool. We're not EU though. It doesn't mm. affect us. It's very sad. I mean, it is, this kind of database should not exist. It's too dangerous. That service shouldn't exist. Pretty much. But yeah. It doesn't serve any useful purpose in the world. But I might but, get a little bit more of a conversion rate. <laughs> I must have the conversion rate. You don't have anybody to market to, Krista. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I market for some of my clients, but it's not really the same. Well, Buggy Cow. Buggy Cow, I feel like uh, one of the better names for a security exploit. It's it's literally the name. I was like, ooh, I wonder if Copy on Right's going to be involved. It turns out it was. Hacker Brief, Google reveals Buggy Cow, Mac OS zero day vulnerability. So this has to do with like uh, copy on write and a secure process, reading and doing stuff from a file. It turns out if you unmount the file system, change the data and remount it, it doesn't notify the process to uh, create its own copy that is definitely doesn't contain anything bad. So this you could use to do privilege escalation and get full root access on Mac OS. But you need some sort of exploit to get in in the first place. So yeah. this is not really all that 
horrifying unless you're already infected. Mac OS. So don't get infected. Whatever you do. This one was interesting. What turns so you, we think about uh, email verification services and the links that marketing people will go to to identify you. So how do you compare two unknown sessions and say, hey, I bet that's the same user. They've got so many tricks, and this is a really good one that Firefox is going to defeat. <laughs> Firefox to add Tor browser anti-fingerprinting technique called letterboxing. Firefox gets another feature from the Tor Uplift project uh, started in 2016. So basically, it looks at your, your window resolution and sets it to a preset resolution that fits within whatever your actual resolution is. So that they can't fingerprint you based on how you've got your window sized or placed. Yeah. So the if you were using Tor and you, they have completely different IP addresses with nothing comparing them, they can just look at window resolutions and time and be like, "Oh, that's a weird resolution. We've never had that before." Oh, look at this visitor at this other site, and oh, look at must be the same person, right? Well, Firefox is going to protect you. <laughs> it's another data point. That, that data point by itself is not all that scary, but when you combine it with a bunch of other data points, then it can be a little more a little more user identifiable. Spectre and Meltdown. I think we've gone maybe four or five weeks it's without... A, it's a specter of the past coming to <laughs> greet us today. Well, it never left. It's still around, but now it's got a buddy. All Intel chips open to the new spoiler non-Spectre attack. Don't expect a quick fix. So this is a Rohammer-like attack, but it's exploitable, exploitable from JavaScript in about two or three seconds. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it turns out AMD's not vulnerable. Good job, AMD. Spoiler. Job. They're just they're just like piling on top of Intel. They're just flexing all over them. Turns out this whole like Intel and their quest for performance, they might have cut some corners. They might have cut so many corners, we may be dealing with a circle at this point. I wonder how this will end. <laughs> Very badly for anybody running Intel. Spoiler alert. <laughs> badly. <laughs> oh, that's where that was supposed to go. <laughs> Android TV. If you've got an Android TV, you can set up your baby pictures or your puppy pictures to be uh, your background. Isn't that sweet, Krista? Oh, that is sweet. Oh, but then everybody can see your nudes. Oh. Boiler Snake uses an Android TV, and he's actually he's he suffering a lot from of this. He's actually nude yeah. all the time. Well, but what he does is he puts on his little bow tie, and that's like his sexy outfit. Uh. And he takes those shots. Yeah, it turns out Android TV bug gave users access to strangers' Google Photos. So Google has disabled the ability to view photos on Android TV while it investigates. This is probably to do with like the TV not having... I would guess. I don't know. This has to do with TVs not being able to generate a good random number. So a bunch of TVs have probably generated the same token. And so when you look at the TV, like the photo thing, it's probably everybody that owns that model of TV. That uh, yeah, their they, pictures. they confirmed it is everybody who owns that model of TV. Yeah, I so. don't know if it's got anything to do with random number. Well, why is Billy, it's 70 degrees outside. Boiler Snake, is, he should not be active. It might still be cold in the basement. Oh, yeah. Damp. It rained we, we will soon have to say goodbye to the snake. He'll be gone. We might have soon. one or two more weeks of cold. But uh, he's getting drowsy. He's going to bed down for the summer. That's one of the reasons he's so unruly right now. Is like if he's always on at a low rumble, it's, it doesn't do that. But when it's gotten very cold from having been off because it's 70 degrees outside, it's like, oh, no. What have you done? You have woke me up. For our hardiness zone, I think we're like six or seven. I think spring officially starts like April 15th. Like you can start planting then. It's last frost. So maybe that'll be last boiler snake. You guys have like a month. Maybe. <laughs> You can come and say goodbye to him. He can hibernate yeah, for can. the summer. Remember the CEO who died mysteriously in India and he had those crypto wallets and nobody could get into him and it was such a good mystery? Well, it just got a lot better. <laughs> Investigators find Quadrigius CX crypto wallets were emptied before CEO's death, so they hired somebody to break into the encrypted laptop and they got in, but the wallets were already empty. Oh, this is really good fan what a twist. Emptied months before his quote-unquote death. The last one was dead? empty just days before his death. Hey, do you think he's dead? No. I don't what know. do you think he's doing? He's probably not dead. He could be dead and it could be somebody else. Like they could have arranged for him to die. Because it was in a hospital, right? Like I think he was getting an operation maybe. Mm. Anyway. Or was it? A lot of money. So they have now confirmed people who were using this exchange and thought, well, it'll be okay when they get into these wallets, right? Nope. Nope. It's gone. Gone forever. It's over, Johnny. 
it'll be interesting to see if they recover this because it's over a hundred million dollars. Well, they can certainly tell where it went. Yeah. So there's going to be a. Fr- you think there's any money left to get the digital forensic guy to go in there and track them down? <laughs> I think at that point it's just bounty hunter country. <laughs> you can keep it if you find it. Yeah. You get ten percent. <laughs> Uh, well, that's been government and security. Tomorrow we'll talk about business and... How, what was our runtime? Robot. I see a four, I think. 45. 45 oh. minutes. Good Lord. That's, you guys are welcome. That's way think, over I, the, the limit. I think 30, 35 minutes is about about the... Word well, engagement challenge. Way they'll, say like, a, they'll say like hours every time. Don't, don't no. give them that. No, some people did like the shorter one. Well, if you want hours, join Patreon because it's all the episodes at the beginning of the week. Yeah, but then that's just like eating. That's like when you go on vacation, if you leave your pet a bunch of food and they just eat it all at once. (laughs) Then they vomit and then they're starving. Or if you're like where you just eat it again. Oh, nice. We'll end on that. (laughs) 